Welcome to another mini video from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm creating an inflate effect using layer effects in Affinity Designer. Even though Affinity Designer does not have an inflate like Illustrator, there are ways around it. I start with a few simple vector shapes and add layer effects to them. The first one is an outer bevel. That gives me the indent the paw now looks like it is indented into the grey background. Affinity Designer allows you to add numbers to sliders once you max them out. So I can go larger than 100 pixels to create a really soft indent. I tried to avoid a pure black for my shadows, so this one has a dark red. Next up I add the 3D effect. This will add volume to the pore. I make sure the light direction for the 3D and the bevel are identical. I want the light to come from the top left. This is something I could also achieve with an inner bevel, but I can only have one bevel effect per shape. I use the 3D effect instead. Adjust the radius. Too little gives you just an edge on the shape. Too much blurs the highlights and shadows across different parts of your shape. I copy the shape, select all my other shapes and paste just the effect. Unlike pasting a style which would include the fill color and the stroke color, this will just copy the effects. I can now go in, edit individual objects, change the colors. This one is set up to use global colors to make it easier to adjust. I can edit the effects for each object individually. The hearts, for example, could do with a larger radius. The same goes for the stars. Adding simple shapes with a Gaussian blur helps to create more texture for the background. I use a simple ellipse, give it a Gaussian blur, convert it to curves, modify it a little bit, duplicate it, rotate it, place it on the background to add additional volume. I adjust the outer bevel of the hearts to soften it slightly. I leave the pattern like this. It has an inflated plastic look. I used simple shapes. Let's try with something more complex. The character consists of basic shapes and a few strokes with pressure curves. I group all my shapes and apply the effect to the group rather than the individual objects. I start with the outer bevel, give it a wide radius, invert and adjust the highlight. Rather than a screen, I want an overlay that gives me a nicer mix with the background. Then I add the 3D. I adjust the light direction and give it a wide radius. Seeing the 3D is applied to the whole group, there are odd effects around the arms, the weapons, the scarf and also the head. I duplicate some of the shapes and place them on top of the group. I can then adjust the effects for those elements. In this case, I group the parts for the weapon and the arm. Once I apply individual 3D effects, the shading of the weapon and the arm looks a lot better right away. I repeat the process for the head, take all the parts of the face, duplicate it, group it on top of everything else, apply the same 3D effect by just copy and pasting the effect. I repeat the process for the fabric and the weapon in the other hand by separating elements of the design and giving them individual 3D effects, it looks a lot more consistent. When you want to scale something like this, make sure that you turn on the scale with object. You can do that for multiple objects, even when they have different effects assigned to them. Usually the inflate works better with simpler designs. So let's just take the head and play with that. I start by creating a silhouette shape for this one, expand the strokes and use the boolean add to make one silhouette. 
add a contour to it to be slightly bigger than my group set it to black and then add the outer bevel to this shape I adjust the radius, set the outer bevel to invert, adjust the highlight blend mode to overlay to get a nicer mix with background colors, adjust the level of the multiply and the overlay to be stronger for the highlights and lighter for the background. I duplicate the shape and create a second shape with a slightly smaller radius to enhance the effect. Next up I add an inner bevel to the head. I use a wide radius, make sure the light direction matches the bevel I used on the contour shape. I copy the head, paste the effect to the two parts of the fabric. It does not matter that these are strokes with pressure curves. The effects work the same on strokes, shapes, or pixel layers. Seeing the eyes are rather large, it makes sense to add a 3D effect to them, so I give them an inner bevel. Now the mask stands out a little bit, but giving that another 3D effect would not help because it already has the 3D from the head. Rather than a bevel or a 3D, I give the mask a shadow and that is the inflated turtle head. Keep in mind that these effects are unique to a finished designer. They will not export without being pixelated. Let's do one more. This one is a quick step-by-step -step, the way you find them in my helpful hints PDF which is available for free. The link is in the description below. The design is made up of simple shapes. Donuts make up the rainbow and a rounded rectangle and circles make up the clouds. I select all shapes and start with the 3D effect. I increase the radius, set the direction of the light, adjust the softness a little bit. I use a different radius for the clouds to give them more volume. I select all other shapes again and add the bevel. I use an inner bevel to create a rim light. Unlike the examples before, this time the light comes from a different direction. So I'm not trying to sync it with my main light but use a secondary light source from the lower right. I soften the rim light by setting the blend mode to overlay and then add an outer shadow to the whole group. This doesn't make the clouds stand out quite enough, so I take them out of the group and place them on top of the rainbow colors. Give them the outer shadow so they do stand out from the rainbow. Using the 3D effect, inner bevel and an outer shadow is a quick way to create the illusion of 3D on 2D objects. And here's the last example. You can see the striking difference between the version with and without the 3D effects. Let's start with the pot itself, give it a 3D for the volume and a slight bevel for a softer light. I add a highlight shape inside. I use the clipping mask to place it inside, duplicate it first then place it inside my shape, copy it and paste inside the larger pot shape to get the additional highlight.
I use the 3D on the leaves. A large radius gives me that extremely rounded shape. I copy the effect, place it on the other shapes, add an outer shadow to differentiate the leaves from each other, copy that, paste it onto the other shapes, copying and pasting the effect does not copy the fill color. I add an outer shadow to the eyes and the mouth as well as an inner bevel and a 3D for additional highlights. I did the same thing for the arms and legs. Finally, I add an outer shadow to the pod shapes and that completes the transformation from a flat 2D design to something that has more volume and depth. I used basic shapes for most of my designs, added layer effects, the 3D, the outer bevel, a little bit of the inner bevel and an outer shadow to create the volume and depth. Just keep in mind, even though you're adding these effects to vector shapes, they are essentially bitmap effects. But there's a lot of fun to be had with them, so give them a try. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new, please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification, leave a like and a comment, and I will see you again soon.